Hi everyone, Nicholas Papitis here from the Junior Senior School. Yep, from Sunny Cyprus. I'm back with another video tutorial continuing the series of Excel tutorials. And today we're going to be talking about the count function. In fact, we're going to talk about five different count functions. Count, count A, count blank, count if, and count ifs. Wow, that's a lot of functions. If you see something you like, make sure you click like. And if you want to keep in touch or keep following the series of Excel tutorials or other video tutorials I create, make sure you subscribe. Let's get started. OK, I've got the spreadsheet here with some data in column A. And in column D, I've got just written out briefly the functions we're going to look at. The first three functions are count, count A and count blank. Now, I'm going to analyze each one of these and I'm going to be using this range of cells A1 to A6. So let's look at the first one, the count function. I'm going to start off with C1 and I'm going to put equals because C1 equals 2 and I'm going to type the function count. Open brackets and I'm going to select the range of cells which I want to apply my count function to, A1 to A6. I'm not going to be copying this formula down using a fill handle, so I don't need to use absolute references. However, I did want to, I can press F4 now, that will apply absolute references, but I'm just going to toggle all the way back to relative. So I'm just going to keep pressing F4 until I get relative references for A1 and A6. Close the brackets and press enter. And I see my value here is three. Now we're going to analyze all, all of these functions at the same time. So let's do the next one, equals to count A, open brackets. Again, I'm going to select the same range of cells, A1 to A6, close the bracket, press enter. That gives me a five. And this one I think is kind of self-explanatory, count blank. But let's proceed, equals to count blank, open brackets and select the same range of cells, A1 to A6. So let's see what each one is doing. So count will return the number of cells in the range which has been selected, A1 to A6, this range of cells here, and it will return how many of these cells contain a numerical value, okay? So in this case, I've only got one, two, and three with numerical values, 20, 19, and 57. If I was to change any of these to, let's say, a currency symbol or a decimal value, let's say 22.56, again, my answer will be three, because that is a numerical value. Count A will essentially count the number of cells in the range selected that has anything inside. In other words, is not blank, numerical or text data. So in this case, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. All of these have got something inside. That gives me five. So we've got one, two, three, four, five cells. And that's why we've got that value there, five. Escape. Now, count blank, I think that's really self-explanatory. It's going to count the number of cells in the range that you've selected that has a blank inside. In other words, it doesn't contain anything. Now be careful, sometimes people leave spaces inside cells. So if I was to actually click on the cell, press space bar and then enter, that becomes a zero. Although it looks like there's nothing inside, there actually is, because space is a character. Okay, so if I just go back here and delete that space, there we go, that goes back to a one and that goes back to five. Okay, so three simple functions there, count, count A, count blank. Let's now look at something a little bit more complicated, the count if function. Okay, so here we have a spreadsheet. This is actually a spreadsheet from the IGCSE ICT Cambridge paper, the 0417 paper. Not entirely sure um, which paper it is. I think it's June 2014. And we're going to use this to have a look at the count if. Now, I've modified this a little bit. So let's just see what this spreadsheet contains. Here we've got the Manta Conservation Project, it says. And we've got an income analysis here. So we've got different incomes coming in from donations with an I code of D 
research grants with an I code of R, and educational pack sales with an I code of E. Now, this part here, the regional analysis, um, we're not going to use for this exercise. So I'm just going to select these rows by clicking on the row number and dragging down. And I'm going to right click and choose hide, just so that it doesn't confuse us. Just makes everything a little bit easier. I know these are hidden because I can see this double line here. Okay, if I zoom in a bit more, so we can see that double line there between eight and 17, and I can see the row numbers are skipping from eight to 17. Okay, now then, what I essentially want to do here is I want to calculate the number of incomes from donations, from research grants, and from educational pack sales. I don't want to calculate the total amount of money collected because that's a different function, that's a sum if. We'll be looking at that in the next video tutorial. I just want to do a count to see how many incomes did we collect from donations, research grants, and education packs. So that's going to be our count if function. Essentially what we want to do with the count if, if I type equals to count if, we can see that the count if function requires two parameters, the range of sales and the criteria. So the range of sales is going to be this range of sales here. This is the range of sales which identifies whether the income is from donation, um, educational pack sales or research grants. And for the answer that I want here, number of incomes, so that's how many incomes from donations, I would simply do by manually, if I was to do this, I will go to this range of cells and I will count how many times I see the letter D. So essentially that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I should get ten. Now that's easy when I've only got about 20 odd rows, but if I've got a few thousand rows, it's much, much longer. So let's recruit the count if function. I'm going to click in the cell where I want to place the answer, and that's going to be C5. So that's essentially C5 equals to count if. So it's only going to count on the condition, and that's why we have the count if, the little if at the end. So first I want my range of cells. I'm going to select the range of cells all the way down to here. I'm going to press the comma now. I'm going to show you using absolute references as well here. So first I will leave this with relative references. I'm going to press comma. And then the next parameter is the criteria. Now I could type speech marks D and that will give me the correct answer. But speech marks D is a constant. So if I just press enter there, there you go, I get 10. But if I was to decide, oh, I didn't want the D here. I wanted to put for research uh grants for example when i change that to an r my number here still stays 10 because inside the formula i have fixed the criteria to the letter d so instead of using d i'm going to use a, a cell reference and i'm going to use the reference inside b5 so it will go to cell b5 look what's inside and whatever is inside that's the criteria now, B5, if you've seen the previous video on absolute mixed and relative references, you will know is a relative reference. If I press enter now, that gives me 10. That's absolutely correct. If I copy this down, however, to do the rest of them automatically, then this is not entirely correct. If I click on this last one, for example, and then in the formula bar, I can see it's using B7, which is correct. But you can see my range of cells has moved down to also. OK, so instead of going from B19 to B39 is actually moved down to because I've copied these two down. So I should have in the first formula selected my cell range, that one there, and press F4 to make this an absolute reference. I'm going to press enter and I'm going to copy that down again. So what happens now is the the B5 is a relative reference. It will allow the B5 to change to B6 as I copy this down using the R instead of the D, which is what we want. But it will not allow 
the range of cells B19 to B39 to change their fixed. Okay, so let's press enter, copy that down, and that's it. That's my count if. So if we do count, we will see that there are three incomes from research grants. So if we have a look here, there should only be three R's. There's one there. One, two, three. Okay, three R's. So that's the count if. Well, let's have a look at the count ifs. Count ifs is exactly the same as the count if, but it allows us to put more criteria. So this one here only had one criteria. The criteria was if it equaled to whatever was inside B5. However, if I wanted to count how many donations were greater than 100, or the amount was greater than 100, then I would need two conditions. First, it would have to be equal to D. The I code must be equal to D. That's the first criteria. And then the second criteria will be in the amount column, it would have to be greater than 100. So to do that, we can't, we do need more than one if, we need ifs. And that's where count ifs comes into play. So here I'm going to do num of incomes greater than 100. Okay, so we're going to have a look at that. Let me just expand that a bit there. So here what we're going to do now, we're going to do equals to count ifs instead of if, that means more than one criteria. Open the brackets. In fact, let me do that again and just zoom in so it looks just a bit easier for you. Equals to count ifs, open the brackets. And here we've got criteria range one, comma, criteria one. So the criteria range is going to be this range here again, the I code column. And I'm going to press F4 because I know I want absolute references now. Comma, and from this range of cells, I want to count how many of these equal to the letter D. And I'm going to use the cell reference B5. So how many of these in here equal to whatever's inside B5? Now that's the same as the count if, comma. Now my next step is criteria range two, criteria two. So the criteria range for two, for the second one, is going to be this range of cells here. And again, I'm going to press F4 because I know I'm going to want an absolute reference. As I'm going to be copying this down for the other ones, I don't want these ranges to move down. But I do want the B5 to move down, comma. And now my criteria is going to be how many of those are greater than 100? Now, here's where some of my students get confused. They do this, greater than 100. If you're not going to use numerical data, but you're going to use text or logic, logic operators like greater than, less than, equal to, less than, equal to, greater than, equal to, you have to use speech marks. If you were saying it equals to 100, for example, just type in the number 100, that will be fine. But since we're going to use a logic operator, we need to put this in speech marks. Otherwise, you will get an error. Okay, so now this is going to return how many from this range here, the blue range here, equals to D, and from the amount range is greater than 100. Well, let's see how many we get. There are two. Okay, so if we look down here, we'll find, well, there's probably one here. So that's a donation and it's greater than 100. And that's 25. Let's find the other one. There you go, D, that's a thousand, okay? The rest of them are all less than 100. Now this one is equal to 100, it's not greater than 100. So if I wanted to include the number 100, I'm going to click here and I'm going to put greater than, equal to 100, again, within the speech marks. And now I have three because it includes this one here, 
where donation was actually the amount was 100. Now I can click on this and copy that down. And always double check when you use the fill handle, click on one of the ones that you filled down, click on the formula bar and just have a look and see what's being used. So for this one here in D7, it's using B7, that's correct. And the sale ranges have remained absolute. They haven't moved at all. So that's it, the count function and its variations. Remember, if you've learned something, you've liked something, click on like and make sure you subscribe. Take care, see you in the next video.